footballer Marvin Andrews has played for Glasgow Rangers, Queen of the South and Hamilton. But he grew up a long way from Scotland, on the tropical island of Trinidad, where he dreamt of one day representing his country in the World Cup. When I was younger, you know, watching, you know, Italian football and telly, yeah. looking at the crowds, you know, the big crowds, you know, cheering the players on. And so I always, you know, dream one day that, you know, I would love to play in a stadium full of people sh shouting your name and, you know, cheering for you and stuff like that. So what's it like when you uh, walk out into a stadium like this? I know you've played in some massive stadiums in your career. It gives me goosebumps at the back of my neck. Really? You know, yeah. What would you say is the, uh, the greatest moment of your footballing career? Oh, my greatest moment for me uh, will be definitely um, when, you know, helping Trinidad and Tobago qualify the, for the first ever World Cup. It was in 1989. Trinidad and Tobago missed out just by one point yeah, against yeah, yeah, America at home. Then I said to myself that I want to be part of the team that will help my country qualify for the first ever World Cup. 16 years later, it came to pass in 2006 in Germany. How did you feel? Amazing, <laughs> amazing feeling. And what I was about... actually crying. And really? I don't really cry. <laughs> <laughs> I had a load of friends who always told me, Marvin, Trinidad and Tobago never qualify for a World Cup, never qualify. I tell them, guys, I'm, I'm not going to stick for that. I'm going to keep praying, keep training hard, and one day that dream will come to pass. So which came first for you? Was it um, the faith or, or football? I always had a faith. My grandmother taught me from a very young age to always believe in God. You know, she taught me to pray first thing in the morning and last thing at night before I go to bed. Well, would you say God's been a support for you uh, throughout your career? I wouldn't say actually a support. I think he's been the leader of my life, if you want to put it that way, because I, I believe that, you know, he has orchestrated in me coming to, to Britain as well, you know, coming to Scotland. He's helped you through? You know, he has helped me through, you know, all my injuries that I've, I've faced. Obviously, I think the, the most noted one is the ACL, anti cruciate ligament, where I damaged my, my left knee um, against Dundee playing for Rangers. It's a career-threatening injury. Um, I came down to two specialists down in England here. They look at my knee and both of them give the same diagnosis that I have to go under the knife. I need to take a surgery. Then I went home and I prayed. I said, Lord, what do you want me to do here? Do you want me to pray or do you want me to go under the knife? God said to me, Marv, believe me. If a professional footballer playing for Glasgow Rangers coming out and say, God will heal my knee, is, you know, is very strange for many people. Alec McLeish, the manager at that time, told me that, Marv, yes, I respect your belief, but if God really will heal you, I want to see it outside on the pitch. We were five points behind Celtic, four games to go before the end of the season. Fans are thinking the league is over. I came up and said in an interview, the league is not over, keep believing, and we can still win the league. Alec McLeish has a dilemma to play Marv or not to play him because technical staff is saying Marv is going to collapse. Yeah. But for some reason, God touched his heart <laughs> and um, he put me in the starting 11. Last game of the season, we are two points behind Celtic. Miraculously, my knee held up. Celtic lost the game. We won our game and we won the championship. So it was a great day. <laughs>